Hello there, I'm Bella Merlin and I'm the author of the Complete Stanislavski Toolkit and today I'm going to share with you some of the tools that I always have in my kit whether I'm going off to do some radio, some theatre, some film, television, commercials and particularly when I'm training actors who are just starting out on their journey. Uh, in fact, I have my actual toolkit here. Uh, my actual tools are going to serve as my analogies for the tools in the acting toolkit and the very first one I don't leave home without is the big tool of the saw given circumstances because I'm dealing with actor training particularly in this short video uh, I'm going to assume that the first given circumstance of who am I is something that a trainee actor already knows. They have their 18, 25, 50, however many years of autobiography already at hand so that they're starting to investigate what their actual acting instrument is. So the given circumstance I want to focus on for the moment is where am I? And this is a really valuable one for both actor training and for building a character because we change the way we act and interact according to where we are. We change what sometimes gets termed our social register, whether we're at home with family, whether we're in a classroom, whether we're in a rehearsal room, on location, on a bus with a bunch of strangers. Um, so our voice, our posture, our actions, our worldview, the perspective we're taking on the situation, these change all the time. So when I'm starting to train young, young actors, I want them to focus on how the instrument itself, subtly, often unconsciously, consciously as well, is shifting according to the situation that um, the, the player of that instrument is in. The second tool I do not leave home without, the big hammer of objectives or needs, wants, desires, the problem, the task, the intention. Personally, I don't really mind what vocabulary I use. The main thing is, what do I want? So that is our key second question. What do I want? And again, this is as useful for actor training as it is for getting inside a character, because I'll often say to my acting students, so think about your own life. What is it that you want at the moment? The bigger picture of your whole life, the micro picture of this particular class that we're in together or rehearsal, etc. And unlocking this, this sense of need, desire, want, the difference between a need and a desire, a want and an intention, subtle, maybe semantic. I feel a subtle difference when I consider, is this something I really need or is it just something I want? Uh, and I also like the idea of what's the problem to be solved, this idea that Stanislavski was talking about, um, the task, the zadacha, the problem like arithmetic that has to be solved. What's the problem in this situation to solve? The third tool I do not leave home without, actions. Those actions might be verbal, physical, what I'm gonna call inner. And let me just say a little bit more about that. So the actions are really, where am I? What do I want are my first two questions. And then the actions are, how do I go about, how, do I go about getting what I want? And as I say, these might be things I say, so the actions are verbal. They might be things I physically do. And they might be unseen, intangible, energetic, so I'm going to call them inner actions. And often when we're working on a script, we might say, well, okay, then what are, are the adverbs underlining what we're do, doing? I ask you urgently. I uh, educate you charmingly, whatever. So um, I'd suggest that perhaps that inner bit is the, is the color that's going on to the 
action. Again, you know, I'll say to my students, so think about your own life. How are you going about getting what you want at the moment, whether it's from this class, this situation, uh, COVID-19, social distancing. And then, of course, the next challenge is what are my obstacles? So what is stopping me getting what I want? What is stopping me getting what I want? And these obstacles may be the environment, which might be man-made or natural. I want to get to the other side of this uh, road, but there's a big hole from where the earthquake left a big hole. I don't know. Um, uh, people, other people. I want to get across this road, but there's a police person telling me that I can't because it's a big hole in the road caused by the earthquake. Myself. I want to get across this road, but I can't because I'm very afraid that that little crack I can see over there is another tectonic plate about to shift and another bigger hole is going to open up where I'm going to cross the road and I'm afraid. The environment, people, ourself. That was just a thought that popped into my head at that moment, which might take us back to this first given circumstance. Where am I? I'm in California. We have earthquakes. We have fires. We have things happening all the time. Uh, so the next tool I don't leave home without, and this is actually where I'm merging a bit of um, uh, Stanislavski with some of the work that I gained from my own graduate time at the State Institute of Cinematography in Moscow, where I did my graduate training. And one of um, my scenic movement teachers, Vladimir Ananiev, introduced me to this idea of the games that are being played. What are the? Uh, he got this idea from transactional analysis, and there's this most wonderful book that you may well have come across, "The Games People Play" by Dr. Eric Byrne. The book's been around since I don't know the 1960s, but the idea behind it is is very very helpful both for young actors to understand their own behaviour patterns, and then also of course when you're working on a script, what are the transactions that are going on inside the dialogue. This is a great big discussion and course workshop in its own right, but I'm going to just flag up a few little pointers here. So what's the game? Or you might even want to say, what's the transaction? And uh, the way that uh, Eric Byrne talks about it in terms of our, what he calls ego states, the way that we, uh, the choices we take to operate in life, our behavior patterns. And he refers to the fact that we all have an inner adult, which is the part of us that's our wisdom, our higher consciousness, if you like. It's always looking for the best outcome for everybody. Uh, our parent, which is the controlling part of us, how do I get what I want from this situation? So to some extent, the parent is is, is a very um, present aspect of actor training. And then the child, which is the creative, anarchic, socio-archaic part of it. It doesn't really worry too much about what the outcome is. Let's just try it and see what happens. And that there are transactions going on between two or more people in a scene where their inner adults and their inner parents and their inner ch children maybe uh, in collaboration, in transaction, in game with each other. As I say, this is a whole other work and, uh, um, workshop and talk in its own right, but it's a tool I love using and I love using it in actor training and I love using it when I'm getting inside a script. The final tool I just want to talk about for the moment, this idea of secrets. What's my character's secret? This came from another of my acting masters in Moscow, Albert Filozov, and he introduced this idea because to some extent it personalizes the script, personalizes the character, also draws attention when you're doing actor training to what are the 
parts of us that we don't necessarily choose to share in a social environment or in a rehearsal room or in a classroom and yet they're really driving us and sometimes these secrets these voices they may be voices in our head can be very positive very helpful sometimes they can be self-sabotaging um, the secret could be absolutely anything. It actually allies, for those of you that are very, very familiar with Stanislavski's system and toolkit, with the um, one of the six fundamental questions, for what reason? Again, this is a whole other talk and workshop in its own right, but the idea of what's my character's secret takes you into the world of imagination and uh, personalizing the character, personalizing the role. And it's playful and nobody needs to know about it. The director doesn't even know, need to know about it. The teacher doesn't need to know about it. But it's one way in which actors can start really engaging their imagination in the building of a role and in their personal investigation of what their instrument is. What's my secret? So those are the six tools I do not leave home without. Checking that I can get it without the light shining on it. Given circumstance, key one, where am I? Because this will in many ways dictate my behaviors and my choices. What do I want? What's my desire, intent? What's the reason I've come into this encounter with this other character or people? How do I go about getting what I want? These are my actions. They're verbal, they're physical, they're inner. What's stopping me getting what I want? The obstacles, they could be, could be the environment, it could be other people, it could be myself. What's the game or the transaction going on between these people in this encounter? And finally, what's my secret? And this is your key to what we can call personalization. The reason why I don't leave home without these six tools is because they engage all aspects of the system. They will engage my imagination or thought center, however you want to frame it. They will engage my feelings or my emotion center. They will engage my will or my action center. And they will engage what I'm going to call spirit. Stanislavski calls spirit. Many other actor trainers call spirit. Again, that's a whole other workshop and talk. Um, but this, these four elements create the four dimensional person that is myself as the acting instrument. And then also helping me be the player of the music of the script that the, the writer will give me. That's it for the moment. Don't leave home without your toolkit. There's a hundred other tools in the kit that are also very juicy and wonderful, but that's a starting point. Thank you so much for listening.